Hey there everyone, Hatesh here and welcome to another late night show and in this video I'm going to walk you through with the production level logger, why do you need it, how you can use it and a little bit more on that. Before we go ahead and talk about these production grade loggers, do you know that there are applications or tools like Datadog, Logly by the famous SolarWinds or I'm pretty sure you have heard about the Splunk. These are the tools which are designed to process your logs and give you a whole lot of meaningful information. But the bigger question that comes up here, that can these log actually just work just based on the console.log? Of course not. We need to feed them up with proper more log information so that we can get some more meaningful data. But what kind of meaningful data? Okay, let me explain you that do you really need such kind of loggers or not? Because bringing up a bazooka in the knife fight is not really the way we do it. So let's just say you have a website which is your personal portfolio or a personal website. Probably 30 to 40 or maybe 50 people's, people in a month watch this website or come to visit the website to know more about you. Putting up a logger in such a website is really an overkill. You should never do that, even think to do that. But on the other side, there is an application which is being used by 200,000, 300,000 or 400,000 people. And you want to know more about the people who are hitting what routes. And probably you want to know that how many users from the single login are using your app, how many IPs are going on into so that you can find out how many people are using the same account so that you can go ahead and block their account. Yes, that's all possible. That's all is being done by using a professional logger. So both applications are hosted on probably AWS or maybe Big Giant. You can call them that both are in production, but depends on the scale that you want to use these kinds of professional loggers or not. So what we're gonna do in this video, in this video, I will first walk you through one such similar kind of logger, which is Winston, but yes, there are others as well. I will walk you through that, how you can use Winston, how you can configure that. First, we're gonna configure that as a fun YouTube level logger, and then we're gonna move into a little bit more onto production grade logger. Then I'm gonna walk you through that, how you can utilize and read a little bit more documentation to put these logs into a file, or maybe later on you want to put it into a database, I'll walk you through there as well. We'll guide you towards the documentation on that part. Now, while creating this video, I have specially kept in mind that some of you might be coming up from React, Vue, Angular, or maybe other kind of frameworks or libraries, Node.js, Express, Fastify, probably God knows what you might be using. So I want to keep this video absolutely independent of any kind of library or framework. We're going to go through with the plain classic JavaScript. Now, one more thing, just remember that you usually don't configure these loggers if you're just getting started into the company. Usually the senior members of the company uh, are responsible for getting these loggers configured properly and what kind of information they want to store in the log. But if you are a guy who is doing a startup or getting started with a product or you are the first one in the company, uh, then this is a great video for you and you'll be able to configure and put all the things into professional logs. And yeah, by the way, this is the same iced tea, but it's so good to drink in this one. Anyways, now let's go ahead, move on to my computer screen and let me walk you through with this Winston. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about Winston and configure that. But before that, uh, here are some of the examples of, I was talking about the, inf the softwares or the tools that helps you to analyze logs in much more detail. One of the famous one is Datadog, uh, which is really popular, getting more popularity. The one is Logly, which is by SolarWinds. And if in case you don't know, SolarWinds is like the most go-to log software for the big giants or uh, top 500 companies in USA. Uh, but this is really popular in the United States. And another one is Splunk, which is new, really popular, and especially in India, it's getting a lot of popularity. Anyways, moving on to the Winston. So this is the Winston library. We are going to configure that, install that. We'll read the documentation together. Uh, so let me fire up my VS Code up here. And in the VS Code, I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop a folder, YouTube Winston, which is an empty folder. Okay, let's go ahead and move it all the way up here so that we get more real estate of the screen. Okay, the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do it is uh, simply saying npm init dash y so that it doesn't keep on asking me the questions. And in here we can see that we need to have an index.js file, which is kind of a standard. Let's go ahead and say index.js. Okay, this new file is up here. We need to modify this as well. So instead of the test, we're gonna say this is a start script and this script is going to be handled by node index.js. So whenever I say npm start, this command will run node and index.js. In the index.js, we have seen that we have this console.log, uh, which is quite quite a regular one. So we'll say log information. I can just go ahead and copy this and uh, paste this one more time or 
two more time. So we have seen that we have some of the warming logs, some of the info logs, and what else? We have debug logs as well, error logs, and a whole bunch of other things. And this is the basic stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and say that whenever I say npm, npm start, this is basic information. We get log information. This is probably warning information. This is info, info information. OK, let's get with that. And this is uh, debug information. Let's run it one more time so that we see that, yeah, these are basics. And in case you are using something else or something other terminal, probably you'll get a little bit more color coding on that. But we can define that, no big issue. I'm going to go ahead and remove this log because this is where we are most interested in that. OK. So this is all basics. Now let's go ahead and move on to the Winston to understand that how this is being done and what we can do. So if I go back up here into the first usage, uh, notice here this is divided into actually two parts. The first is this part where it says that how you can create a logger and put more configured information on that. And the second is how you're going to configure your environment variable. Now this totally depends on you that what are the parts that you want to change in the logger based on whether it is in production, is it in development, or maybe just on YouTube. So we're going to take care of that a little bit uh, later. This part, we are not going to be copy pasting from the docs because we every application has its own way of managing the environment variables. Uh, some uses uh, .env file, some goes like this, and there are other ways as well. So feel free to use whatever you're using. Coming on to this part where we are configuring our logger, the most important thing here is the level, the format, and the transport. The level is something which everybody should know. So let me walk you through with this. So go up here into the logging levels. And here we can see that there are two types of levels, the syslog, which we are not using. So we're not going to study that. And another one is NPM, which we obviously are going to study. So this is one here. So every level has a, a, every log has a level. The first one we can see that error has a level of zero and all of that. The most important thing is if your level is set to info, that means your level of the log is set to two info. All of the above logs are allowed to be printed, but anything below that, so HTTP log cannot be printed if your log level is info. If your log level is debug, then all the logs which are above are allowed to be printed, but the silly is not going to be printed. That's the one thing that you should really know. So let me go ahead and move at the top uh, again. So this is the first thing. Then the second thing is the format. Usually, all of the three giants that I've showed you which can process the log, they require these logs to be printed up in the format of JSON. That's kind of a standard, industry standard. And the third one is the transport. This is where you define that where, whether your log should come up into a file, uh, maybe into database, or just at the console. This is where you define it. OK, you got this one. I guess that's all what we need for the basics. Now let's configure a little bit more on that. So first, let's go to the package.json. We won't be installing the .env. We'll be just throwing up the environment variable right from here. So here, you can actually go ahead and say node underscore env and can say that, not equals, you can say e YouTube. You don't put equal. This is not a string. This is an environment variable. So this is how you do it in case you don't want to install the env file. But this is very basics. OK, that part is all done. Now let's go ahead and first install the Winston. So we're going to say npm install Winston. Come on. There we go. Looks OK. Now Winston is a very, very small package, and it's going to be installed before I say it, that it will be installed. OK, that part is good. Now, how do we do it? Whether you're using React, Angular, Vue, or maybe anything else, this is how exactly everybody does it. So you'll, you'll see exactly the same thing happening in your company as well. There is usually a new folder called as logger. And inside this, you get an index.js file. OK, so why we are having this one? To actually control more about how things are happening. So let's just say here we are having a logger. And that starts with null. OK, and then you define this logger based on, on which environment you are. So that if anybody is here in the index and is using console.log in any of their application, they can use it directly by saying, I don't want to use console. I don't. I want to use logger. That's our company policy. We don't use console log. We use logger dot whatever the name is there. And all you have to do is, is simply say that I want to have this uh, logger. And that logger will come up from require. And uh, let's just say the logger. That's where it is coming in. 
Okay, this is resolved right now. I understand this part, but the problem is that how this logger will take on more information. Let me show you that from the documentation. Let's go ahead and copy this entire line and study that in the docs up here. Okay, the first thing I want to do is obviously say module dot exports that is logger. So now we are throwing this logger back and this guy who is saying that I'm importing that he is able to import that. That's nice and easy. Okay. Now the important part that comes up is that how this logger object will be changed or how we are going to configure this. Right now you can see that the format is simple and there are some objects are configured properly here. But right now instead of saying that logger is going to get an add and all of this let's go ahead and define this logger in its own separate file in a minute and i'll say that hey logger you'll be getting all information from something known as youtube logger method now obviously the question is where is this youtube logger method it doesn't exist we need to create that so let's save this one up here and i'm going to go inside this logger and i'm going to say all the things that i want to do as a log on the youtube i'll just store that into this youtube logger.js file Okay, nice and easy. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to say uh, this is YouTube logger. This is a simple method. You can use the regular JavaScript method too. That's fine. And I'm going to go ahead and say module dot exports. That is YouTube logger. Okay, that is nice and easy. There we go. Now another thing we obviously have to do is go into this logger and make sure this YouTube logger method is being imported because we are doing a module.export. So let's go ahead and say that I have a YouTube logger which is coming up from require and we are saying please bring this up from YouTube logger. So instead of just configuring this logger right here and meshing all the code inside up here, we are trying to keep everything into the separate file. That's kind of a standard practice in the production. This is all great, but one thing is still bothering to all of us is what's going on inside this method? I have no idea how this will be configured. And that's what we are going to study in this Winston. The first thing obviously is to bring up this very first line so that we can have a usage of the Winston. Okay, there we go. That was easy. Now let's go ahead and study this. So how we're going to study this, we are going to copy this entirely and we'll just move up here and we'll say, hey, let's just paste this up here. Okay, that is fine. That is fine so far. Now let's go ahead and make it runnable because this is going to give us an error because here we are defining another logger and configuring it instead of that. Now everything is handled by this YouTube logger, a simple JavaScript. So we need to return this entire thing. So instead of just storing that into a variable logger, let's go ahead and return this directly. Okay, that makes sense. Now we are saying that the level is info. So if my file is having something like debug, it's not gonna be printed, that is obvious. The format we are using is JSON. The default meta, we don't need this information much. Let's uh, comment this out. And here in the transport, we are saying we are storing everything into the error log. And we are storing that another one more time into a file name of combined log. Okay, makes sense. But let's see if we are able to actually run this directly or do we face any problem or issues. That's how we learn. Let's go ahead and say this one. And I'm going to say npm start. Let's go ahead and run this. Okay, something happened. So we see this combine.log, which is having some of the information. Notice here the warn and the info only, nothing about debug. And there is an error log as well, which is empty. Okay, that's nice. The reason for that is because we are having some of the le levels being defined and all of that. Okay, that is nice. Now it's time that we actually go ahead and play a little bit more with that. Okay, first I'm going to go ahead and change the level to debug. And obviously I don't want to just create so many of the files. So I'm going to go ahead and change all of this. So instead of saying that all of this information going like that, let's remove everything up here. And as you can see, this transport has so many of the option. You can just throw that up into the file. You can say HTTP to, so that you can stream the data or you can use HTTP and there is a separate for streaming. Maybe you are constantly analyzing in the real time. Uh, maybe you're using some of the AWS services. Yeah, you can do that. And there is a format, there is a JSON. <laughs> there, there is a lot that you can go ahead and use up here. I'm gonna go ahead and say this, this is a console. So whatever you see, just don't throw that into a file, just throw that onto a console screen so that I can see it right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove these comments, unnecessary, so there we go. 
Okay, nice and easy so far. Let's go ahead and run this one more time. So now we can see that all these messages are being printed up here. Okay, that is nice for now. I know how to store them into file. I know also how to store them or just display them onto this screen. But now let's go ahead and work a little bit more. Let me show you more onto the documentation. If you go up and read this entire table of content, you're gonna see so much is there. One thing that is going to obviously catch your eye is the formats. So there are a lot of formats being available. And as you can see that instead of just uh, having this logger, just like basically we have, we can actually use this format and then we can use this combined method to give it more information than it is having. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna go ahead and copy this entirely and paste it up here. So now instead of having this winston.format, we are going to go ahead and say, uh, let's, is it winston.format? Uh, because this is actually now copying all the things up here. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and paste this up here. Okay, this is good so far. And we don't have this my format method being defined. So let's go ahead and define that also. So we'll bring this method up here and copy that. So this is how you can actually uh, define your own custom format the way you want it to feed it to other uh, data dogs to analyze and further stuff. We're gonna go ahead and remove uh, timestamp is good, label is good, message is also good. We are not playing around with the levels, labels, so let's go ahead and remove that. And this is good, and my format is all good. We don't need this label of meow, that's why we are not playing with this one. Okay, that is nice as of now, I guess. But this is going to give us some of the issues, I'm pretty sure of it. Okay, let's go ahead because this combine needs to come up from because notice here in the documentation they are saying that I am actually destructuring this combine from the format which is coming up from a format and this is coming up from Winston. So we need to say winston.format.combine and that is too much. Let's go ahead and do that. Not a big issue. We can destructure that. That would be better but winston.format dot combine that's actually too much yeah let's do this we can destructure it or let's see how many errors we are going to be facing okay so this is going a little bit that printf is not defined okay i get the idea printf let's see how or from where this is coming up so printf is also coming up from winston dot format dot printf ah come on Okay, so this is here. So Winston dot format. Nobody uses it like that. Everybody destructure that. But let's go ahead and see that. Having some fun with the Winston. Okay, let's go ahead and say that. NPM start. There is again something missing up. Combine. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and destructure it because this is getting too much. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And I'm gonna go ahead and comment this out and we'll paste it up here. There we go. And now I don't need to say all of this because otherwise it will drive me insane that this is so much going on. We even don't need to say Winston dot because we have destructured it. We don't need to say it like this because we have destructured it. And uh, transports, yes, we have transport as well. So we don't need to say Winston dot transport. We can just say transports. Yeah, that's, this makes sense now. Okay, hopefully. Let's go ahead and clean up the screen and say that. Okay, now we are seeing more options and information going on here. So what I'm gonna do is just where the timestamp is, uh, this is like the default server time. I'm gonna inject an object and I'm gonna say that I need a different format. So I'll just say format, there we go. And the format I'm interested in just hours, minutes and second, classic JavaScript. Let's see if this makes sense a little bit more now. Uh, yep, this is a little bit more senseful now. Oh, actually there is a small error. I actually accidentally removed this level. I sh should have not done that. Okay, I hope you are enjoying this. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and we'll paste that. Okay, now this should be a little bit better. Let's go ahead and run this one more time. And there we go, finally it's better. So we are having first the time 
then we are having warning so this is my custom format that i've defined up here first is timestamp then there is a level there is a message so in case you want the levels to come up first we can go ahead and do that that's basic classic c c plus plus style of timestamp that we are going on for that so this is all what we are doing up here uh, with the, some of the fun stuff now let's go ahead and work a little bit more now uh, some of you might be really interested in the part is uh, let me go ahead and move in the documentation again okay so here you're gonna see that there is an option of colorizing as well which attracts a lot of people i'm not able to find it so let's go ahead and say uh, there are option of colors so there we go you can define all the colors however you want for the levels of these colors so just like that and all you have to do after that is just say that hey i want to use this colorize and there we go winston.format.colorize so yeah that's easy we can come up here and say level just after the level we can just not here in the format we can just go ahead and inject it here i guess colorize and there we go put up a comma hopefully that is it although it says there is a winston.format.colorize i don't think so we need it let's copy this just for the sake that I haven't done any mistake. Save that and let's see how it works actually this time or maybe we need to debug it more. And uh, there we go. It is having a colorize. So let me go ahead and add it a format. I guess that's how this is being done. Let's go ahead and see that. And there we go. Now we see more colors into the warning and info and the debug. Okay, again, uh, this is how everybody learns about a new library or Winston. There are other famous one in the production as well. But this is how everybody does. So notice here it says winston.format.combine and here it says winston.format.colorize. And then you can use the format of JSON or anything. Usually JSON is the standard format. You can change the background colors and foreground colors. Uh, you can inject these. So there's, there's a lot that you can handle up here. Okay, so this is all the playing around with the libraries that we are having. Okay, but now it's time that we go ahead and see that how this can be used into multiple environments and multiple production goes, go, when it goes on. So notice here we say is index.js. So now we can go ahead and literally just copy and paste this one. And we can see that this is all your playing, playing stuff, uh, which is not equals to production, but rather we can actually go ahead and say that, uh, go ahead and use all of this when your environment is YouTube. Go ahead and use all the settings when you are having this production. This is fine. And we can go ahead and change this one to production production logger. So from where this production logger is going to be coming up, of course, from a file, which we don't have. Production logger. There we go. And this is going to be coming up from require. Just like this. And we're going to say dot slash. The file doesn't exist but we're gonna call this one as production logger. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go ahead and copy this and uh, say, oops, and save this one. And let's have one more file up here, which we'll be calling as production, come on, as production logger.js. So we have a new file. All we have to do is just go ahead, copy all of this data because we have played around and now this is a production. And instead of saying like this, let's go ahead and use the production logger. Yeah, we are exporting a method known as production logger, which will be exported just like that. So that is absolutely fine. And probably in this one, we don't want to play that much. Uh, we know that this is exactly the format or probably we want level to be coming up first. So let's go ahead and maybe this is the exact format that your company is following up. Then we need a timestamp and all of that. Uh, we obviously are now in the production mode, so we don't need a timestamp like this. We need an exact server timestamp, so that is fine. Obviously, in the production, this is never ever recommended that you go ahead and use the colors. And the level uh, depends. Maybe it is in the production, so we don't want a debug level. Maybe we want an info level. And obviously, we just don't want to have a console log. We need to store that into a file. Or maybe we want to dump that on console log as well. So let's go ahead and move on to this guy. And there we go. And we want to have this one. And we'll be saying new, not mu, new. And we'll be saying transports dot. And you can see there is a lot of things going on. We'll be going for just the file, uh, just like that. And inside that, we can pass on the name of the file as an object. So we'll be saying file name. There we go. And we'll be calling this as my errors 
dot log maybe whatever the file name you are going on and there we go just with a few clicks your production level logger is ready maybe you want to add more you can go ahead and do so and now all you have to do is go up here and change the environment variable that now we are in production and there we go that's how we change all of this now let's go ahead and run up this that how it goes on and look up into the production so we say npm start and no colors there is no debug and this is exactly what i want maybe first the log messages then exact server time and then we are having warning information or information like that okay so this is how you go ahead and uh, configure a production level logger of course there were a lot of errors in this video i'm not going to skip them out because it is important for you to understand that how we go ahead and play with the documentation have some errors fix them up this is how everybody plays in real life this is not uh, some polished and stuff like that so there we go but one more thing i want to show you here is that this is not the only famous library there are many other libraries as well but what makes you a little bit surprising that this library is so much used and so much configured along with mongodb that if you go ahead and say winston uh, mongo db there is a standalone library here for the npm and all you got to do is just install it and the configuration is like super smooth you just simply say require winston mongodb so yeah we go ahead and require that and then we simply say winston.add and we just simply say new winston.transports.mongodb and then you pass on all the options here options which has a mongodb string new uri parser so if you are familiar with the mongodb this shouldn't be much more of a nightmare for you so I told you this is like so much of the popular library that people don't just use winston they also like to store logs into mongodb and maybe lots of other places as well so now that you know and i'm pretty sure you are going to use it much more in the production environment but please don't overkill that if you have enjoyed this video make sure to hit that subscribe button if you have enjoyed it more go ahead share this out with the world otherwise no problem at all we can still be friends and hang out on instagram catch me up there and yes i'm going to catch you up in the next video and then we're probably done at last cuz i got some way to be and you're done deceiving me into thinking i couldn't do better yeah no one was probably crazy thinking some day you'd change there's nothing left to do now so i'm playing the game and so Heartbreaker, I've been working you out. You may lose a mess.